Now let's take a look at how you'll be able to work on your finance project. So when you're in your assignments, when you're in assignments in Ivy Land, uh, please scroll all the way down to the project. So project number two. Okay, so you select the project and you hit preview. Okay, preview will give you an overview, everything that is in the project. Is that okay? All the way to the last page. Is that okay? So this is what you see. All right, now let's go up and uh, I will explain how you'll be able to work on this project. So um, let's look at the preamble. So as an IB Tech um, student, you are making an investment in your education. Now, before I, I go ahead, this is not timed. So you'll be seeing the time elapsed there. It's not timed. Just take your time and then work through it. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to finish up. Okay, when you're, fin when you're done, you just hit submit at the bottom. Is that okay? Nice. So let's go back. Sorry. All right. Now, the project, the project will look at um, how the investment into your education will pay off if you graduate and get a job in your desired field. You will be comparing your future finances with someone who is not a college graduate. All right. Assume that the median annual income for a person who is only a high school graduate is 21,550. So this is the number that we are going to assume. So this number is going to be the same for everyone. All right, so every student would have to use um, this same number as the high school graduates annual salary. Is that okay? Nice. Now use this value in comparison statements with proper absolute and relative change statements. Now you remember we looked at absolute and relative changes, right? Where we said that absolute change is the new minus the old, right? And relative change is the new minus the old over the old. And relative change is a percentage change. So you're going to multiply by 100 to change your answer to a percent. Is that okay? Now. You may be wondering, between high school and a college, uh, which one are you going to use as the new and what will be the old? Obviously, uh, because um, your associate or college will be the current, that's going to be your new, right? And then high school will be the old. Is that okay? So this is how you're going to do the comparison. Now, in this project, you are required to do the following. So you are going to create an Excel spreadsheet to help calculate the correct values for housing and retirement. So um, let me show you. I'm going to attach a template. Okay, so let me show you here. Nope. So this is a template that I have created and uh, I'm going to attach that template in your project. So basically, that's how it will look like. So you create, you use this template. So you look at the college graduate, the high school graduate, you look at the absolute change, high school to, um, to college, right? And then the relative change. Now we will take all these one after the other. Is that okay? So let's go back into Ivy Land and look at the rest of the instructions. All right, so I'm gonna maximize this one more time. Okay, so as um, referred to the Excel help in the book. So we already took, um, we had Excel uh, certification at the early part of the semester and we have already done the first project using Excel. So I want to believe now we are, uh, we are much familiar with Excel. Now we are here, we are going to use uh, these functions, the PV function, the LV function, and the PMT function in Excel. And these were, these functions um, were discussed when we're looking at loans, all right? When we're looking at retirement. And uh, yeah, so these are the two areas that we'll be focusing on. So we are going to focus on loans and retirement. And remember we said that the PV function is used to estimate how much of a loan you can afford, right? When you know the monthly payment. And then FV is used to estimate retirement. Is that okay? 
uh, and then PMT is used to estimate the monthly payment. So PMT stands for payment, LV stands for future value, and PV stands for present value. Is that okay? So you have to really be able to differentiate when to use each of these functions. Sounds good. All right. Now, your type responses for this project will consist of answering short answer questions given below. Each short answer should be a minimum of three sentences and 50 words. Use proper quantitative reasoning and wording to address the solution. This should clearly convey your message to a reader who is not taking Math 123. So don't assume that I know everything that you're talking about, right? Assume that you met this guy on the street who knows nothing about um, what you're doing and you're trying to let the person appreciate what happened in your quantitative reasoning class. Now, make sure to use your spreadsheet to answer what if questions with specific values and provide support for your statements. To do this, make changes in your spreadsheet and analyze the results of the manipulations. Now, be quantitative and specific with correct absolute and relative change statements. You remember that? So be specific. I don't want to hear stuff like, and I'll give you the hint here more, less, be quantitative, all right? I would want you to quantify um, your, your answers. So your answers to these questions will be typed and submitted in Ivy Land, and I'll show you. We'll go through the questions one after the other. Now, the hint here is as you're writing absolute or relative change sentence, make sure to address more than or less than what value. Now, writing sentences such as, the absolute or relative change is this value will not be counted as correct. You remember we said that when you do the absolute change, the new minus the old and you get a positive, that means an increase. When you get a negative, that means a decrease. So I would want to see proper quantitative sentences and not mere uh, more than or less than. I would want you to quantify um, your responses. Is that okay? Now, what is the meaning of an absolute or relative change in a scenario? Okay, nice. So, um, so basically, this is the preamble. Now, to answer uh, answer the two following questions related to your median annual salary, that of the high school graduate. Now, explain what job you have chosen. So, explain explain the job or the career you have chosen and what has inspired you to pursue a career in that field. If you plan to earn a certificate or associate degree from Ivy Tech, find your estimated earnings using this link. Okay. And then if you are planning to continue education or transfer to a four-year university, use the median salary from this website. So these links have been provided. So whatever career that you want to get into, uh, you'll find um, your salaries here, okay? Nice. Now, how does your salary compare to the high school graduate using both absolute and relative change statements? So you just need to find the absolute change between high school and the college graduate or your associate, and then you do the relative change as well, okay? Now, we are going to look at um, salary increase. So your employer offers two options as an increase to your salary for the next year. Option number one, you can have a 2.5% increase of your median annual salary. And option number two, you can take an increase of 1,000 added to your annual salary. So you're going to go, you go you're going to do both options and then the question will be find a new annual salary for both option one and option two. Okay, you need to show your calculations. How did you come up with, how you came up with those numbers? Is that okay? Nice. Now, which option should you choose as a college graduate? So when you do option one and option two, you then make a decision, right? Which of them do you think, um, 
is, is the best option for you. And then explain why using absolute or relative change statement in your response. Are you good? And then next, find a new annual salary for both option one and option two for high school graduate. And then you show um, your calculations. Okay, so you're doing for the college graduate and then you're doing for the high school graduate and you must show um, each of those options. Now, which options should the high school graduate choose? Explain why using an absolute or relative change statement um, in your response. Is that okay? So that is the first part talking about the salary increase. So you're looking at when there's a percentage change, right? There's a percentage increase of 2.5%. And then when there's a first amount, all right, added to your salary, and then you make um, the right options in each case for the high school case and for um, the college case. Now, Calum, now assume you can afford to use 7% of your monthly gross income towards your car, your monthly, um, your monthly car payment. Now the terms of the loan are 4.25% APR for five years. Okay, so you're going to assume that um, assume that you can use 7% of your monthly gross. So you notice that the values that you find from um, the website or even the, the initial value that I gave you for the high school graduate, it's the annual, right? It's for the whole year. So if you want to do the monthly, you have to divide that by what? By 12 to find the monthly and we are using gross. So when you do that, that gives you your monthly pay. Now you do 7% of your monthly pay and use that uh, for your car payment. So here, what function, Excel function do you have to use? Do you have to use PMT or you have to use PV? So I'll leave you to answer that question. Okay, so look at that. So note the function to use, all right? Either PV or PMT, one of them. Okay, I'll let you uh, do that research and get that done. Now, what is the highest price car you can afford based on the information above? So based on this information, what's the highest price car that you can afford? And then be sure to show and explain um, the Excel formula that you use. Now, does this amount get a car that um, you will like? And what are some strategies you can use to make sure the car that you purchase does not exceed your budget? All right, so you come up with some strategies that you can use to make sure that um, the car does not exceed your budget. All right, I can give you a clue on that. You have to look at car insurance, you have to look at maintenance and all that, all right? Factor that into everything, but Okay, so I, I, would, I wouldn't go too, too detailed into that, but look at some of those, all those, you know, factor all those into your analysis. And let's see how you do that. Now use an absolute or relative change statement to compare the highest price car of the high school graduate and yourself. Okay, so that is the, the piece that you have to, to work on regarding the car loan. Okay, now let's talk about retirement. Now, assume that your selected job has a retirement plan that allows you to save for 32 years. So we're going to assume that um, the job that you've selected will allow you to save for 32 years. Now, if 7% of, 7.5% of your monthly income is put into a retirement account, so note, here, you do not have to do any subtractions. Now, because you work on the, on the car loan, don't assume that you have to do, you have to subtract that and then do 7.5% of the remaining money. You're still going to do 7.5 on the same amount that you worked on using for the car loan. Is that okay? You do not have to subtract anything. So work 7.5% on the same amount of money, your monthly income, all right? 
and uh, put that towards um, your retirement. Okay, now how much should you expect if the average annual return is 9.7%? And be sure to show and explain the Excel formula you used. Is that okay? So the IV function that you use, uh, we all want to see that. Now use the same conditions, determine, um, using the same conditions, determine the amount a high school graduate should expect to have in the account. So you're going to use this same information, right? Bullet number one, with the high school graduates monthly income, all right? And then you, you run the analysis on that and uh, you compare, right? So use an absolute and relative change statement to compare the retirement account of the high school graduate and yourself. Then include some final observations about saving for retirement. So um, if are some observations that you make regarding uh, retirement. Now, the amount that the college graduates save for 32 years enough to live off to keep your standard of living? Do you think um, how much the college graduate will be making for the 32 years out of the retirement will be enough considering the standard of living? Are there things not taken into consideration when calculating the retirement amount in the college graduate's account? account? Okay, so think about it. We want to get you thinking about, you know, the decisions that you need to make towards your retirement, the decisions that you need to make towards your car payment and all that, all right? So this is supposed to get you thinking about life and how you intend to plan your life um, from now um, going forward, okay? Now, assume you are saving for retirement with the same stipulations as before, 7.5% of your income at the rate of that. Now, how long will it take for your account to reach a million dollars, okay? So here, so you look at the first FV function that you used here for bullet number four, given the returns, all right, on that account, you just need to make an adjustment. You just need to change the years and see um, how long it will take you for you to reach a million dollars. Is that okay? So just adjust the years and see. So you look at, okay, how much would the 32 years um, give you? All right, now, if the 32 years is not up to a million, you want to check how long it would take. So you just need to adjust the years using the same every function to check um, how long it would take you for your account to, to reach a million, okay? Now compare the amount of time taken to reach a million for you and the high school graduate. And then again, use absolute and relative change statements to do the comparison. Now is a million dollars a good goal to have for retirement? Why or why not? And are you surprised by the amount of time that it takes to save a million dollars? Why are some general observations? What are some general observations about the high school graduates amount of time to achieve $1 million amount in retirement savings? Um, in what ways did this project change your mind um, about your career choice? Okay, so these are reflections that you make out of um, the analysis that you're going to run here, okay? Now let's come to the specifics as to the questions that you need to answer. So here, you're just going to type your responses here in these blanks, okay? So question number one. So what you do up here is a template, right? Now here, you come down and answer the questions, all right? So you can make some adjustments to the template that you created up, you know, and then you answer these questions. The first question is answer. Um, the two following questions related to the median annual salary and that of the high school graduate. Explain what job you have chosen and what has inspired you to pursue to pursue a career in that field. If you plan to earn a certificate or associate degree from Ivy Tech, your estimated earnings will be here. Okay, so this is about the career you've chosen and what you intend to do uh, from here. Okay, so that's for question number one, okay? and that carries 12 points. 
Now question number two, this is where we talk about the salary increases. Okay, so you look at the 2.5 and then you consider the first 1,000, okay? And you answer the questions, all right? Which option should you choose as a college graduate? Explain why using an absolute or relative change statement in your response, okay? And then find the new annual salary for both option one and option two, all right? Which option? should the high school graduate choose? So these are basic questions and I feel uh, we have addressed them in the earlier part of this conversation. And then question number three, we come to the car loan. So we are doing 7% of the monthly gross. So we are not including taxes. And then the conditions that we looked at, the loan has 4.25% APR for five years. And then what's the highest price car you can afford? Okay, be sure to show and explain the Excel formula you use. Does this amount get a car that you, you like? You know, so similar or same questions have been addressed earlier. Okay, so you have to know which function to use, right? You have to know, do I use PMT or do I use uh, PV? All right, so these are the two that I use for loans. PMT and PV, so differentiate, find the difference between the two and use the right function here, okay? And then we come to retirement and FV, the FV function, the future value function is dedicated to retirement. So this is where you apply um, your FV function. All right, so you run your analysis and you come up with your reflections. And then finally, uh, you look at how long it would take for your account to reach a million dollars. All right, and then you answer the questions that follow, okay? So that's basically it. When you are done with your inputs, you hit submit, and then you turn in your assignment. Okay, and that is the end of the project, basically, okay? So let me see, up here, I would want you to attach, for question number one, I would want you to attach um, your Excel file. Right, I would want to see your Excel document. So you, you hit that and then you upload, okay? Because I would want to see how you went through the, the, the function that you used and all that. Is that okay? Nice. So basically um, that is all that um, you need to do regarding this project. So let me, um, let me know if you have any questions on this project. All right, so thanks very much and do have a good day. Bye-bye.